Welcome back to our video module on the WKB approximation where we continue our discussion of how to use the ARI function to compensate for the weaknesses in the WKB approximation where E equals V or E is close to V. What I've done is I've redrawn our potential profile along with our energy on the top up here, as well as redrawn our five regions, where on region one, we have some sort of sinusoidal function. Region three, we have some sort of decaying exponential as um, tunneling reduces the magnitude of the wave function in section five, but in section five, we return to some sort of sinusoidal function. And as we discovered in our last video, in areas two and four, we have, we'll just put an AI for airy function is the governing form of the wave equation. And whereas last video we looked at the B area, this time we're going to take a look at the A area. So what I've done is I've recreated the A area blown up. And we know enough about how wave functions work that we can actually sketch out what the wave function will look like in this zoomed in area. We know on the right that we have some sort of exponential decay as E is less than V. And we know on the left that as we move from the left to the right, the difference between E and V is decreasing. So the magnitude will increase and the frequency will increase as well. So what I've done is I've separated this graph into five zones. We know on the leftmost zone, we have some sort of sinusoidal function. We know on the right-hand most zone, we have e to the negative kx, or some sort of decaying exponential function. And we know that in these three sections, we have some sort of airy function. Our difficulty is how do we connect a sinusoidal base function, which we know from the WKB approximation, to this airy function? And how do we connect the exponential decay function, which we know, to the airy function? In other words, how do we bring these together so that our slopes and our values all match up? This is the challenge of connecting the airy function. Today, we'll be looking at an overall strategy of how we integrate the airy function into this type of problem so that we can find solutions to the wave function that make sense. First, I'll start off by telling you that the actual solutions of the airy function are a linear combination of this form of the airy equation and this form of the airy equation, this AI plus BI. There's some sort of linear combination. And I'll tell you right now that in area C, what we have is the full airy solution. The challenge now is to connect this full airy solution to, let's say, the right-hand side, the decaying exponential. And what we find is if we move up to this airy equation right here, if we focus on the AI and we get really far away from the origin, that the airy function begins to approach a decaying exponential of a specific form. So what we do is we write out that decaying exponential form and we adjust the coefficients in such a way that it connects with our WKB exponential decaying form. So what does this effectively asymptotic form of the airy function look like? For z is much greater than zero for the airy function. AI approach is one over two root pi z to the one fourth e to the negative two thirds z to the three halves. And we'll call this equation beta. And what we see is we can now use this equation beta right here because it's of the airy form, simply an asymptotic z is much greater than zero. And because it's a decaying exponential, we can adjust the coefficients to look like the WKB approximation. In fact, we can do the same technique in the B region of this graph. Down here, we see that the wave function is now looking more and more like a sinusoidal function, which if we return to our airy graph, that's precisely what we see up here. So if we assume that z is much less than zero, then we see that ai becomes asymptotic towards a sinusoidal function that while rather messy, is solvable. And if we wanted to, we could name this equation, say, gamma, which would mean over here in the enlarged graph, the governing form of the wave equation will be gamma. It fundamentally is an airy function, so we know it'll link to the airy function. And once again, with manipulation of our coefficients, we can have it match up with a sine function in region A. So in summary, today we saw 
as we already knew, that the airy function can help us identify the wave equation where E is very close to V. And we've explored a little bit more of how to patch together the airy function, the exponential, and the airy function and the sinusoid. Join us on our next video when we explore more characteristics of the airy function so we can learn how to apply it and how to connect it to the WKB approximation. I look forward to seeing you then.